All right, what's up everyone and welcome to another episode of The Strength Classroom. Today I'm showing you my max effort upper body workout. And the lift that was chosen for today was pin presses straight off the chest. Like the bar is literally touching my chest at the bottom. So it's basically a dead stop bench press. Some people might call this a dead bench. Now, as I went through my sets, I realized that doing them straight off the pins, like having to set up from the bottom up is just not consistent. It just feels wrong. And I'm really gaining nothing from it. Like it's not a test of whether I can set up under the pins. That's not actually going to carry over to any kind of strength. That just has to do with setting up. So I worked up to a peak single of 285 for one, and I could have done more because when I did my back down sets, I kept the pins the same and I unracked them exactly how I would a bench press. And I was able to do a lot more reps. Like here I'm doing 225 for five. It was fairly easy. And you'll see my next set, I do 245 for five. And the last rep was kind of hard, but there's no way that only translates to 285 for one. So whenever I do dead benching, I am going to unrack it like I would a regular bench press. This allows me to practice my setup for a regular flat bench, and I think that will have more carryover. The actual pushing motion, yes, that has carryover, but to start it from the bottom and then have to kind of maneuver myself under, I don't feel like that's doing any benefit for me for anything really, other than just making it harder for the sake of being harder, not for actually accomplishing something. So this was good. Then I moved into some two board benching. This is a bench block. I bought this about a year ago. It's a really good product because I lift by myself and I have no one to hold the boards for me. So this is great. It's a two board, three board, four board, and five board. Really, I only ever use the two and three board. Four board and five board, I don't know. I don't know who would ever need to use that, but sometimes I'll do a couple of sets where I'll do a two board, then a three board, then a four board, then a five board, like a rest pause, and then all the way back down. Those are killer. And I just adjust the block. You can see there's different grooves, but I did four sets of 10 here and I'm approaching to where the weights are gonna start getting heavier as opposed to 10 rep sets. I'm gonna start doing six rep sets after my main work and the other work after that will remain the same, but just a little bit more intensity is gonna come in the next couple of weeks. Then I moved into some lying, I call these a tricep deadlift. You can see call these tricep floor extensions, whatever. I call it a tricep deadlift because you're literally lifting the weight with your triceps from a dead stop. That's why it's called the deadlift, the other exercise, because you're lifting up the, it's a lift that starts from a dead position. So these are great because you get no stretch reflex. It's all triceps, no momentum, no nothing. So I did four sets of 15 here. The triceps were pumped at this point between the board press and the these what you see right here the tricep deadlifts it was just tricep annihilation and if my bench does not go up and my triceps do not grow and get stronger after all this tricep stuff i'm not lifting anymore because i have done so much attention to my triceps that if it if i start feeling midway to lockout again like the upper portion of the lift in the bench I'm just not benching anymore. I'm going to do whatever the heck I want because that this would have just been a colossal waste of time. So far, it's paying off. But I'm just saying, like, all this weak point stuff I'm doing, it's carrying over for now, but it better carry over in a huge way, specifically the triceps. I put so much work into my triceps. Now, this is a new lift I've done. You've seen me do seal rows, but I've attached, like, the cable handles onto it to get some extra range of motion and make sure it doesn't bump into the bench, which is a problem with seal rows. And these were amazing. On my next set, you'll see, I decided to do them from a dead stop. And I actually have to stop midway through the set because my back and lats started cramping up so much that I just had to move. I had to get out of that position. You'll see, it's like on the fifth rep or so. I think it's right here. Yeah, and I remember I, I was just swearing as I got off the bench. I was like, F this and F that. And I'm like, you know what? I got to finish the set. And I finally understand why these are called seal rolls because when you pull, your legs come up in the air and you look like a seal. 
that has to be the reason why they're called CEO Bros. Then after that, you'll see me move into some very close Swiss bar overhead presses. And this is good. If anyone that says overhead pressing or shoulder pressing doesn't hit your triceps is an idiot. It doesn't hit your triceps to the same degree that a flat bench would, but it definitely hits your triceps. Don't listen to idiots like that. I did five sets of 10 or four sets of 10. Sorry, I planned on doing five sets and I'm like, ah, what's the point? Four, four sets of 10 just is good. Then I did some rows. With, I know this is not the best camera angle. I only filmed one set. I apologize. And I made sure my elbows were pointed out more to hit more of the upper back, mid back, and rear delts. Because I was just going to do face pulls again. I'm like, I want to do something heavier that'll hit that area like face pulls. So that's all there is to it today. And then I did some weighted carries at the end, as usual. If you like this video, please click that like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, share the videos with your friends if you think they'll like them as well. If you have a question for me, drop them in the comments, but as always, class is dismissed.